Hello Wacom family and welcome to a new step-by-step -step sketch lesson. Today we will draw a dog. To understand how best to draw something, it's always helpful to reduce the image to some basic forms. In the case of a dog, we can reduce it into a few circles. The bottom two circles will form the body and the top circle will form the face. And let's add another smaller circle to the top one. This will form the dog's muscle. Now let's connect the circles to form the dog's body. Just with some simple lines for now and also to have a picture that does not look like four circles. For the legs it can be helpful to imagine a human's leg with really big feet standing on their toes. Especially to make sure that they face in the right direction and that all the joints bend the right way at the knee, the heel and the toes. The dog would look really unsettled if for example the knee would bend in the wrong direction. So let's just pay attention here. One straight line for the tail and for the face, let's add a simple nose, slightly standing out at the muscle circle. One ear hanging down at the back of the skull. And one turned V for the eye, slightly higher than the nose. Now we can start outlining the dog's body and features. If you're using paper, it's best to use a darker, softer pen or pencil if you're using a digital device like me, maybe it's best to reduce the opacity of the sketches that you've been working on so far and open a new drawing layer for the outlines. For the top of the body I simply traced a preliminary drawing with pretty straight lines, but to create a realistic look for the bottom you can use kind of hatching lines so that the fur doesn't lay flat like it does on top. Then to add thickness to the legs, we need outlines on both sides of the scaffold line. And we also should pay attention that the legs tend to get thicker at the top. Except when your dog is wearing rollerblades, of course. So using these steps, you can draw dogs in all sorts of poses. The first step is to position the circles correctly. You can draw in the central axis of the head. Then it's easier to find the correct position for the eyes and muscle. For the quick sketchy style, you can roughly trace the preliminary drawing with the outlines and add hair with the help of quick zigzag lines. By using the simple steps described here, you can get pretty far in most cases. As with any subject, the best way to capture it most accurately is to draw directly from a living model. Now let's try one more. Maybe this will be some kind of a golden retriever. Depending on the pose and perspective, you will need to vary how you draw different parts of the body, bulges and indentations, bones, muscles and wrinkles. You can often work out the right places for them using your imagination. Sometimes you might need to take a closer look at the anatomy of a dog. Now let's start with the eyes. Just one circle each. Maybe I will need one guideline here. And first I define the corners of the eyelids by following the guideline to get the right angle for the eyes. Dog's eyes are more circular than human's eyes. So I will add the eyelids fairly close to the circle. The pupil goes into the middle of the circle and one reflection point each. A dog's nose is a pretty complicated structure with some bumps and folds. So here is some kind of a construction plan. 
I start with this rectangle proportionally like a common piece of paper, half it in height and width. We only need the lower part here. Now position the nostrils on the horizontal center line, each one halfway to the center point. On the sides two slightly angled down marks a little bit below the center line and a little V in the center at the very bottom. Now connect the markings with the nostrils with some kind of a snail shape. And starting from the snail a bit invert, I draw this half pipe shape towards the V. Now we can round the edges and repeat the nose with some clean outlines. From the front the muscle looks a bit like a W. In this drawing the dog is looking slightly to the right, so the right side of the W should be a bit narrower than the left. The tongue comes out directly under the W and hangs out over the lower lip. These creases here in the corners of the mouth make the dog look more happy. And we can also start the chin from here. And I already do the rest of the outlines of the face. And for my dog I want an even better beard. The face is done for now, but I forgot one leg here, I uh, just realized. I just marked the lower end of each leg now, the more distant ones a little further up. And now let's take a closer look at the paws. A dog's paw has these four toes at the front and some kind of a, a thumb, pretty far away from the paw itself. So from the front we can kind of construct it like this. We need these four toes and the, I call it thumb, is somewhere like above here. And we got a paw. Okay, this looks really awful. But okay, I have four paws to go. First of all, let's draw the whole path as simple shapes, just to define the approximate sizes. And then just subdivide and fill in the toes. And the thumb up here. And with the outlines, I just follow the construction. You can give the toes more definition by adding spaces. And now let's just finish the preliminary drawing a bit. Below the neck, golden retrievers have that kind of a bathrobe color. And on this side, I think I need some improvements. Maybe the dog would have some creases and hills here. But especially down here, I would say, if the dog is sitting like this, we would see the hip bone also maybe a bit lower. And now as before we can indicate fur in the outlines with quick hatching strokes. This softens the hard edges of the outlines and gives the dog more uh, fluffiness. There are many possible workflows of coloring. I prefer to work with fill layers for each individual color tone that gives me the opportunity to adjust and change individual colors at the end. Once I got the whole dog filled with this basic coffee brown shade, I use a light pink shade for the tongue and a very dark brown shade for the mouth, the shadow the muscle casts on the tongue and for the nose as well as for the eyes. Now it is important to decide where the light comes from. If the light comes from above and a bit from the side maybe, just like I decided here from the left side, we will need our shadows 
of course, on the right side and at the bottoms. So just following this principle, I roughly fill every part of the dog with shadows. Maybe some light can reach this uh, left side of this muscle part here. And the whole head will throw a shadow down here on the right ear and on the body. Now I also want this basic shadow to give the dog a soft coat. So I soften these hard shadows with a smoother brush. It's just a 0% soft pencil outer edge I'm using here. If you are using pencil on paper, you can use a blur tool for this technique. I guess it's called a stomp to get more accurate smudging than using your fingers. I also want to have some fur-like texture. But instead of drawing tons of hair, it is a very common technique to use a fur brush for this purpose. So instead of a line, it draws lots of hair at random, smaller, larger or even slightly twisted. You can use the fur brush also in a fill layer, which simply means the hair won't be black, but any color you want. I also want to create more depth, so I got one fill layer more in a very light brown tone. And now I'm filling only the opposite areas, so the areas uh, which the light reaches. After this I can erase all the areas I don't want to be filled with the light hair texture, especially in the shadows. Now I will do exactly the same as before, with a darker brown shade, but in the shadow areas of course. By this point you also will be able to tell whether the individual shapes go well together. If you've worked with fill layers, you can always readjust the shades and gradations. In these darker shadow areas I can switch now back to my soft brush and let the dark hair get denser. At the end you can also highlight the nose with some very light shades. Depending on your style you can go into much more detail with your dog of course. You can keep a more sketched look or take the level of detail up to photorealism. But I think I am done and glad with my dog for now. Hopefully you have enjoyed following this workflow. There are always different ways to draw a picture. So keep bringing your own ideas, but also keep looking out for inspiration from others. I wish you happy painting and see you soon.